I'm just gonna, gonna drop into Fusion 360 and um, it's a little bit advanced what I'm about to do. So I know that a lot of you haven't used Fusion for a while or ever. So what we'll do, uh, I'll go very slow, okay? Um, but I am gonna skip out a lot of the basics. Uh, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna draw the screen for the, for the walkie-talkie. Now in order for me to do that accurately, I need to put a picture of that uh, walkie-talkie plan into Fusion. So in order for me to do that, I'm gonna go to Insert, use the drop-down menu there. I'm gonna click Canvas. It's gonna ask me uh, what I wanna do and I'm gonna uh, get it from my computer, so Insert from the computer. And the, the screenshot, and I'll put this on the LP, the screenshot is um, from my desktop, that's where I saved it. So I'm gonna open that. Now it's gonna ask me what face to put it on. Now, it doesn't really matter because I'm only using this to create a cutting path. But um, because I'm actually drawing the front face and I'm uh, a person of good habit, I'm actually gonna uh, place it on this front face here. So as you can see, I haven't clicked anything. It's just asking me to select, and I'm gonna select this one. Now, if we, I know this is the front face here because it says front face there. So that, that facing the same direction, I'm gonna click this, and it's there. Now I can stretch it. Um, I'm just gonna do that so that you know that it can be scaled up. And I'm gonna press OK. All right, so now uh, that's a two finger, what's it called, expand to zoom in, and two finger pinch to zoom out. Two fingers on the mouse pad and move it around will pan it. Uh, but I want to look at this square on, so I'm actually going to click the front word on the uh, view cube, it's called. Okay, so here is the screenshot that we've dumped in. Now I know that, uh, because I've actually measured it um, by, on the printout, that that little line there and that little line there are 131.5 millimeters apart, okay? so that line there and that line there are just above 13 centimeters apart. So the, the thing I need to do now is I need to scale this to make sure it's exactly the right size so that whatever I trace will be the exact same size when I cut it out on the laser cutter. So I'm gonna drop down the menu there for canvas, click that screenshot, right click, so two finger click, and calibrate. And this is how we're going to measure it. Now I'm gonna zoom in make it more accurate and as you can remember I said that that line there that line there were about 131.5 so that point to that point and obviously keep it square because otherwise you're going to get a hypotenuse and that'll be different so now I type in 131.5 and press enter and as you can see that, um, that enlarged it a bit so if this line to this line is one, uh, 131 131.5 in real life, it is now 131 in actual um, digital life. So now all I need to do is I'm gonna trace around that screen. And of course I'm only gonna do that, but of course you can trace around this here, you can trace around these buttons, you can trace around the numbers, whatever you want, and then you'll be able to cut that um, and then, uh, push that into the foam. And in order to make that recess, you're probably gonna use some sort of hobby tool or Dremel. Now, to save time, I'm gonna mirror, I'm actually gonna draw this, and then I'm gonna mirror it so that it goes onto the other side and I'm gonna connect them. So in order to do that first, I almost need to find the center. So again, we're going advanced, so I'm gonna create a sketch there, so on this plane. So we're drawing definitely 2D. Now the line type I'm gonna use is a construction line because this is a line that I do not intend to cut. So I'm actually gonna click that. I'm going to use a line and I'm gonna go from that corner there and you'll see a dotted line appearing 
And I really want to get to, if I do that tip there and try and keep it the same. And then I'm going to go and do the same again. So from that line there, and you can see the little red tracker will turn up automatically. So from that line there, and we're going to try and go there. And that red tracker is going there as well. And that intersection point is my center. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to keep it on the the construction lines because all I'm doing now is just trying to find that center line. Um, I am going to, what's the easiest way? I uh, will do line. So here, click the intersection point, come straight down. Okay. Now you can see that it will snap. And that's what I need it to do there. So that means that that is now my mirror line. That is right in the middle. Now you can either uh, you can either press escape and delete these construction lines if they're confusing. So let's press escape. That takes me out of the line tool. Highlight and press delete. Click and press delete. I'm going to leave this. I need this one. Now we're actually going into the real line. So click that line type. So we're now off construction. You're going to go here, which is the uh, spline tool. And I'm actually going to start there. So my, I'm going to specify my first point there. Click. And I'm just going to follow that line. Now, if you're snapping, so to snap means it will, uh, like a magnet is pulling it and keeping it there. If you don't like that, you can actually change that to here. So you just click that and you can uh, turn snap off or incremental moves off. I don't mind it because I've zoomed in. So I'm going to click there and I'm just going to do intervals. Click there and click there and click here. Now we're coming up to the curve, so I'm just going to click a bit more um, often at closer intervals. And we're coming up to there. Now two fingers moving down without clicking anything else. Come there and we're going to keep moving, moving. And don't worry if you're going over, we can adjust it later. So we'll just keep going there, there, and there. Now, can you see I'm just moving? Can you see that little green mark? Well, that's just saying that I've met the end. Okay. If I press escape now and click off, you'll actually see that blue line. Okay? And I reckon that blue line is amazing. But what if it wasn't? Oh no, that's disgusting. So what we're going to do is, this is how you do it. So these are your nodes, and you're going to click that and move it into place. Let's say um, it's still not working. If you click the node and don't drag, so click it once, you'll get these. These are called handles. And now I can actually move these around so that that arc fits it better. I'm going to just click off that. <clears throat> so that's done now. Now, if that's a bit confusing, you can always hide your canvas so that you can see, but I'm just going to leave it on. Okay, so the next part is to mirror it. So I'm going to click the mirror. So I haven't clicked anything else, okay? Everything, nothing is selected. Click mirror. Now, the object uh, is actually a line. So the object I want to mirror is that. The mirror line, so I'm going to click the mirror line, is that construction line. And I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to finish that sketch. Now you can see that it's blue, shaded blue. And that means that um, I was so accurate there and there that it automatically joined it. Now the good thing about this, when things are blue, it means that you can make them solid. Of course, we don't need to do that. But if I was to do that... I would go here, press pull, or press Q, and I could click that, and then I could start making things solid. But of course, we're not doing that, okay, so I'm actually gonna undo that. So all I need, if that, by the way, if that can't, if you can't select that, two fingers uh, onto the cube, don't click, just move up and down on the uh, mouse pad, and then it should be able to select. It's a weird glitch they've had for so many years now. Okay, so that's it. That's my screen. Now, of course, exactly the same. I could go around here the same way with the spline tool. I could go around here, same way with the spline tool, and then 
I can mirror on that line and it will come straight over to there. But I'm not going to do that because that's doing it for you. So the next part is we're on a sketch. I'm going to go down there. That's the sketch. I'm going to hide the canvas so I know exactly what I'm copying. Sketch, two finger click. I can save that as a DXF. Now a DXF is a, a line that has uh, that has a property. Okay, so and the property is it can be used as a tool path. Okay, which is what the laser is going to copy um, when it cuts the acrylic. So I'm going to save that as a DXF and I'm going to call it screen. And I'm just going to dump that on my desktop, which isn't the best practice. Okay, that's done. So now if I go to uh, the DXF, which is on my desktop and screen, I'm going to click that. Now this one opens up with um, Adobe, what's it called? Adobe Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to start a new um, screen and I'm going to put it on Adobe Illustrator and show you how to put it onto the laser cutter uh, using my camera. Okay. Okay, apologies for uh, the wobbliness. Um, of this video. So I've taken the screen DXF, that was the file that I saved from Fusion, and I've placed it onto this computer here. So that's the Mac that controls the laser cutter. Now the software that controls the laser cutter is this one. So you'll see that as Smart Print or SP, and that's always on the dock. And the trouble is, uh, this is a bit finicky and does not read DXF. So, it means that you've got to go here, take your DXF file, and drag it into uh, AI. Okay, now AI should always be on, but if it's not, you just have to go to the finder and type in Adobe, and it should turn up. We want the original size, but we are going to have to check it. And we're just going to press OK, and that should uh, turn up. Now, that has got that horrible little... Uh, line there so if I just uh, click this on the selection tool and highlight that and then press delete that disappears now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag it into the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag it all the way up to that top left corner I'm going to file and I'm actually saving it as a standard AI file. Okay, that's an AI file and shouldn't really, but I'm going to dump it on the desktop with about another thousand files. Okay, so that is called Screen AI and that is done. Okay, once that's saved, you're going to go back into Smart Print, you're going to go Import. Um, we are going to the desktop and I'm looking at that Screen AI and open it and that is what we're trying to cut out so again drag it into that top left so you're really looking for zero zero there's zero there a zero there and we're looking for it to be here now it's pretty small uh, so just under five centimeters and to me that feels right so now it's time to cut it out uh, we're going to uh, we're going to engrave it so we go engrave that's going to bring up another window. Um, the, the, the settings are here, okay? So if we go to pen there, if I click notes, you'll see that we've got acrylic. Now, I wouldn't use acrylic 3 mil. I think that's way too thick. It's going to mean a lot of work. You could use much thinner. Um, you could probably make it out of even tracing paper or any, any really, really thin ones. But the material I've got at hand is 3 mil, so that's a 1.1 speed and an 80 power. And of course, if you wanted to use, let's say, 1.1 or 1 mil, which would be better, then you would just either um, reduce the power or increase the speed, okay? So it's not cutting it as long. So 1.1 speed, 80 power. So here, the line is actually a black line. If it was a red line, I'd be changing this. It's not, it's black. So the speed I said was 1.1 1 
and I'm going to click out of the box and the power I said was 80 and that is now out of the box click out of the box again just to make sure it sets otherwise that doesn't move up the next thing you're going to do so you've set your power you set your speed you're going to go to advance and you're going to go home you're going to make it relative that means when you see the red dot on the laser that is where it will start to cut if you say home it will not cut in the corner it will cut like five centimeters away now you can't press ok because the laser cutter's off. Now I've left it off so I can show you how to turn it on. The first thing you're going to do is those two buttons there. If it doesn't turn on, that button there. Now it's going to prep itself so the lights will come on, the green screen's on, that's initializing. But while that initializes, you're going to want to go here and turn the air on. So what that does is that air comes through and in and it's uh, it's just creating I guess it's creating pressure so that the fumes come out and through the hose uh, through a filter hopefully and into the wilderness another thing to make sure is make sure that that is on otherwise it will work but the laser won't work and now we have an empty file And that is the red dot I was telling you about. If you go home, it will start there automatically. We want it to start there. Get your material. And with your material, you've got to take the paper off the front. It's, like, it's better if you take the paper off the back, but definitely take your paper off the front. So I said that that screen was about five centimeters. That is about five centimeters. I'm gonna cut it in that little area there. So that comes in, there's no paper in the way. I set my red dot into the corner, I close the lid. I now go to okay. And that's gonna send that cutting path now, for that shape here. And you'll know it's done because that will say done. And you press okay if you want, doesn't really matter now. It is now here, so that is graphic one. That's what it's called itself. 1.1 speed, power 80. Everything set except for the height. Now you don't have to do this all the time, but you take this one, put it in very carefully. Make sure that that is over a piece of plastic. And press auto focus. Okay, so that dips up, hits the switch, goes down, enter, take that out, otherwise you'll set it on fire and that'll cost the fortune. Set the red dot, press start. Okay, so I'm slightly off, uh, probably better to use a larger piece and there is your screen now so all you need to do and it's going to be difficult because I've only got one hand uh, you take the paper off and there's your screen and of course you can then put and there's your screen and then of course you can put your numbers on the other side uh, recess that and then uh, glue it down